Globe Earthers are taught that the reason the North Pole Star cannot be seen from southern locations like Australia or New Zealand is because it is hidden behind the supposed curvature of their globular Earth. Similar to what is taught about boats disappearing beyond the horizon, they claim these boats, and the Pole Star, are disappearing behind the physical curvature of a globe, and insist if the Earth was truly a stationary plane, that Australians should have no trouble viewing Polaris. The fact of the matter is that all stars positioned north of a southbound traveler gradually decline overhead the farther the observer travels southwards, just as all stars positioned south of a northbound traveler gradually decline overhead the farther the observer travels northwards. Likewise, all stars located north of a northbound traveler gradually rise overhead the farther the observer travels northwards, while all stars located south of a southbound traveler gradually rise overhead the farther the observer travels southwards. This phenomenon has absolutely nothing to do with the supposed curvature of a globe, and everything to do with the law of perspective, which dictates that the angle and height at which an object is seen diminishes the farther one recedes from the object until, at a certain point, the line of sight and the seemingly uprising surface of the Earth converges to a vanishing point, in this case the horizon line, beyond which the object becomes invisible. Thomas Winship wrote, If we select a flat street a mile long, containing a row of lamps, it will be noticed that from where we stand the lamps gradually decline to the ground, the last one being apparently quite on the ground. Take the lamp at the end of the street, and walk away from it a hundred yards, and it will appear to be much nearer to the ground than when we were close to it. Keep on walking away from it, and it will appear to be gradually depressed until it is last seen on the ground, and then disappears. Now, according to the astronomers, the whole mile was only depressed about eight inches from one end to the other, so that this eight inches could not account for the enormous depression of the light as we recede from it. This proves that the depression of the pole star can and does take place in relation to a flat surface, simply because we increase our distance from it, the same as from the street lamp. In other words, the further away we get from any object above us, as a star for example, the more it is depressed, and if we go far enough, it will sink, or appear to sink, to the horizon, and then disappear. Furthermore, globe earthers always mention visibility issues specifically with Polaris, because it can only be seen by observers north of the equator, which could seemingly fit their narrative of disappearing due to curvature. Many other stars and constellations, however, are visible for a much wider spectrum of observers, far beyond what would be possible on a globe. For instance, Ursa Major, very close to Polaris, can be seen from 90 degrees north latitude, the North Pole, all the way down to 30 degrees south latitude. The constellation Vulpecula can be seen from 90 degrees north latitude, all the way to 55 degrees south latitude. Taurus, Pisces, and Leo can be seen from 90 degrees north, all the way to 65 degrees south. Aquarius and Libra can be seen from 65 degrees north to 90 degrees south. The constellation Virgo is visible from 80 degrees north down to 80 degrees south, and Orion can be seen from 85 degrees north all the way to 75 degrees south latitude. Observers on a ball Earth, regardless of any supposed tilt or inclination, should not logically be able to see this far. And once again, rather than the declination of the pole star proving the globe, it provides yet more evidence that Earth is a stationary plane.